back for our next uh, departmental budget discussion. And uh, I'm Mayor David Briley, and I'm joined this morning by Emily Passini to my right, who's the Chief of Staff here in the Mayor's Office, and by the City's Finance Director, Talia Lomax O'Neill, who is to my left. Uh, let me start by just saying a little bit about last year's budget process. As you might remember, it occurred under unique circumstances uh, in many respects, and it was a tight budget year. But during the last uh, year, we've had the opportunity all to tighten our budgets and live within our means. And uh, as a result of that and some increased revenue uh, that we're projecting for the coming uh, fiscal year, we're in a position to do a 3% cost of living adjustment for all our Metro employees. Uh, that means everybody who works for the Metro government will be getting a raise. Uh, Everybody will be getting that cost of living adjustment, and then there'll be step increases for many and open range increases for many more. Um, so, uh, you know, all in all, we've made some progress in the last 12 months since we sat here together. Um, this morning, uh, I'd like to uh, in, uh, start off with the, um, we have the General Sessions Court uh, here this morning, and Judge Blackburn, If I, I know who is with you, but for the viewing audience, if you'll introduce who is here with you this morning, I would appreciate it. Werner Hassel is with me this morning. He's the uh, General Sessions Court Administrator. And uh, if you'll uh, give your presentation and uh, leave a little bit of time for questions, I would appreciate it. And if you could uh, give us an update maybe on the Mental Health Court and the Veterans Court, I think those are, are, are issues of great interest to the public, and I know you're deeply involved with those as well. I will be happy to. I'm going to defer to Warner as far as the budget is concerned. Sure. And when he concludes, I'll give you an update on Veterans and Mental Health Court. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mayor, in our budget request for the... Uh, the new fiscal year. Uh, we had three principal items that, that hit the, uh, uh, the priority group, uh, app appropriate priority groups. Uh, those three are uh, the cost of living pay raise adjustment for the uh, general sessions judges, uh, a new digital recording uh, maintenance agreement that we have for our new digital recording system. Uh, the first year of the maintenance for our, our recording system was paid uh, uh, within the first year uh, when we purchased the uh, the system. Let me stop, Warner, right there. Yeah. Um, the system was purchased last year, and the system has made an enormous difference in the efficiency of the court. We've not had to redo hearings, which was something we had to do with the prior system when it failed to properly record a preliminary hearing, it has been amazing to have an efficient system because the light goes on and there's this little blue person behind us that we know it's recording. It's amazing to be able to be efficient. So, When the blue light goes out, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we know it's not working and we know not to have a hearing yet. Yeah. Uh, the third item is, uh, is something that, that, that Judge Blackburn could definitely uh, add to is uh, the forensic mental health evaluations. Uh, that's a cost uh, for misdemeanors uh, that the state, when they were having financial issues back during the recession, they shifted that cost to local government for misdemeanors, uh, misdemeanor forensic evaluations. So uh, we have money in our budget to cover some of that, but not uh, what the demand is by prosecutors and public defenders. And so we have, have an item in there for that, and we've attempted to cover those costs in other areas. Any questions about those three items? I think they're pretty self-explanatory. I believe they are as well. Okay. As far as the Veterans Court, um, there is a request for, um, I believe, I'm looking at it. That's what we got in the past. Okay, that's what we got in the past. Right, right. And the, the funds that are there are actually a pass-through because that position is funded by the state. And it's one person that is the Veterans Court client specialist, but all those funds come from the state and pass directly through Metro and are paid for that individual salary. Um, the mental health court 
we have requested 57,600, which was what we have requested previously, and that is paid by Metro for staff. And that makes such a difference. Our recidivism rate currently in, in Veterans Court is 4%. In Mental Health Court, it's 15%. But in the general population in our jail, that's 65% recidivism rate. So the work that both of those courts do, as well as the drug court, makes an enormous difference in the population here in Davidson County. And Mark Winslow, would you come up here, please? You're better at this than I am. <laughs> Mark is the court administrator for both the Veterans Court and Mental Health Court. What is the amount of money that the um, specialty courts save Davidson County every year because of those courts in jail? Uh, if you take the standard cost of incarceration per day per person, we roughly, between the two, the Veterans Court and the Mental Health Court, save the city about $5 million a year. So that paying for a client specialist is a small cost to the city as opposed to paying the $5 million to incarcerate the individuals that come through those courts every year. So the work that they do makes an enormous difference here in the population in Davidson County. Yes, ma'am. This is probably the one. <laughs> um, I just want to spend a moment talking about your revenues. Okay. Uh, and the mayor does have that in front of him. Um, can you just, for the listening audience, just kind of uh, speak to what's going on? I think everyone is very familiar with the driver's license reinstatement fee going away. So, but um, there's just um, a pretty significant trajectory right. versus 2016. Right. So um, just anything that you can share with us about um, where we are today, where you think we're going? Yeah. Uh, the reason for the shortfall compared to last fiscal year is something totally out of mm -hmm. direct control of the court. The number of uh, moving violations issued by the Metro Police Department is down over the same period of, of last fiscal year. So when we have fewer moving violations that are issued, then the pool of potential enrollees in our traffic school are, are down as well. In addition to that, uh, the Steering Clear program was initiated last, I believe, September 1st. Uh, and so individuals that would have been, say, booked on a criminal driver's license related offense are no longer being booked, but are, are screened and handled through the Steering Clear program. Uh, we don't get all the referrals from the Steering Clear program of folks that, that do go through their program. So that's, uh, and also the, the 1A docket no longer exists so uh we don't have well it's it's a, the state misdemeanor citation docket that was predominantly driver's license related offenses those those uh the, the one stop shop yes. yeah and that went away as a result of steering clear and um the reduced number of citations being written there was no reason for that docket to exist any longer. So what we did is the bond dockets were so heavy, the witnesses were having to sit there most all day. And we created an additional bond docket to be more efficient with the criminal court system as opposed to the 1A docket. So 5D. yes, so 5D became an additional criminal bond docket. I'm really sure. Yes, but we have restructured the traffic school to make it more efficient. Um, and Warner, you can speak to that. Yeah, uh, to, to meet the, uh, the savings target that we had, uh, the employees that uh, are with the school are working a 32-hour week here for the balance of the fiscal year. 
Uh, and so there's a, a reduced number of classes as well. So the demand on the, the number of, of classes for the traffic school are less now than what they were a year ago. It's not really so, impacting services. It's just it's well, somewhat. It's impacting services in that if someone would like to say attend a class next week, we may not have a slot available next week. We we used to have more and more offerings, but we're we're trying to maximize our classes rather than having National Safety Council standards are 20 per class. We were having some that were 10. So we're trying to maximize the cap as much as possible. But uh, if all of a sudden there's an increased number of moving violations or something happens where we get more referrals, we would have to ramp up because we can't turn we can't mm -hmm. turn business away. Mm -hmm. The general sessions for probation fees, those are way off as well mm -hmm. since 2016. What's the what's the under why is that? Uh, we have uh, on the prosecution side or in the courtroom, there's under advisement pleas and agreed orders that the prosecution and defense uh, present to the court for their acceptance. That is a way of where someone would have been put on probation, but they have to do other things that, that the, that's part of the plea agreement. And so as a result of that, uh, we're not getting as many uh, people on probation now. And it may be too, I mean, and Judge Blackburn could allude to this about uh, the stance of the prosecutor on misdemeanor yes. prosecutions. It's as a result of the pleas that General Funk is possibly offering to those individuals in the courtroom. So the it's, so that would actually result in less work for the probation department. Is that right? It means if they're having fewer, it's not just the fees. It's actually the work associated right. with probation. The, work, the workload is decreased. And has the a number of probation officers decreased since 2016? No. Uh, no, they, they haven't. Now, we have, as part of a savings target, has, we have kept certain positions open, and they will be remain open or unfilled for the balance of the fiscal year so we can meet our savings target. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank Anything? you. Thank you all very much. Okay. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you.